All right. So we are going to be going through the three <clears throat> new Idaho 4 documents. All right. Three gonna, new ones. We're, we're going to read through them here, and then uh, we will talk through them for each one. So, um, hang on one sec. Let me... All right. So, for number one, we have... Uh, State of Idaho plaintiff, first Brian C. Koberger, motion requesting clarification of the sealed order for disclosure of IgG information and protection order. Comes now Brian C. Koberger by and through his attorneys and hereby moves this court for an order clarifying language contained in the sealed order for disclosure of IgG information and protection order filed with the court on December 29th of 2023. The court sealed order states that no individual on the family tree may be contacted by the defense or any agent of the defense without prior authorization from the court after a showing as to why such contact is necessary and material to the pr preparation of the defense. The defense, as part of the necessary work, has previously identified family members and work is being conducted. The defense does not expect to use the protected materials to identify people to contact without further order of the court. However, the defense needs to continue its investigation with witnesses and resources generated from sources outside of the protected materials without worry. The plain language of the protective order could be interpreted to prevent that work. The defense seeks clarification of the specific language of the protected order dated 8th day of February, 2024. And yes, signed by Ann Taylor. All right. So where do you think they're going with this? That they need to be able to contact people on the family tree. Yeah, but they're attacking this DNA order, right? So um, a couple things that come to mind, and I've said this from the beginning, is look, if I'm Brian Koberger, and I'm not saying that he's innocent or guilty, but if I'm Brian Koberger, and I truly am innocent, right? Like I really am innocent of this. What's the one piece of evidence I would I would have to attack? The DNA. The DNA, right? Because it's impossible that it's there or there's some other explanation for it, right? There has to be. Mm -hmm. There's no other option. Like if he's innocent, he wasn't there or there's some kind of explanation. So it's interesting to see that they're continuing this fight on the DNA evidence. Could that be interpreted as some kind of innocence or at least add to the probability of his innocence? Um, I think it's a good argument. I think it's a really good argument. And uh, I'm curious to see where it goes. I'm curious to see the angle they're going to take on this. Me too. I wonder what they're going to find. So they're digging through all of the IgG. I'm curious, have they dug through how the sample was collected? Because, um, you know, I believe the collection of the sample and whether it's valid or not, like the validity of that sample probably matters more than anything because of Bicca Barlow's statement that it was partial and ambiguous. Like, the actual sample. I'm curious <clears throat> if they're going to attack the actual collection of the DNA. Like, it would be really hard to prove that it was, like, planted or something like that. But, like, I think the lab notes, like, do they have lab notes from the state lab? Like, do they, like, have they looked at that process of collection? Um you know, chain of custody, possibilities for contamination, um, the fact that it's partial and ambiguous, like in Bicca Barlow's statement, like, is it even relevant if it's partial and ambiguous? Like, you know what I mean? Like, have they looked at the actual matching of this DNA? Uh, yeah. Or what parts 
do match, right? Mm -hmm. Like how many were used in that? What, how many markers were used to identify him? And what's the probability in a college town that uh, the same markers could be used in this way? Right. 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 I think that's important. I think that's really important in this situation. Because, like, even if they prove the IgG is bunk, does that prove the STR is? No. That's what I'm curious about. I, I don't. I, I wish I knew. I wish I knew. But the fact that there's still an attack on the IgG in general, um, in my opinion, that's keeping me interested in this case. That's keeping me focused because uh, it, from the very beginning, I felt like that was the biggest red flag in my opinion. And the reason for it is a couple different things. But the the main, the big one that I have is the fact that they included Texas at all. That is such an uncommon thing to do. Why? Why open up the unreliability of the chain of custody to send it to Texas when based on some of the investi investigation work that you've done, they have the ability to do these same tests in Idaho already. Oh yeah. I, I have the document actually here that um, they, they were absolutely able to do this um, starting several years before the crime ever happened. Um, here, this it's this it's uh, Idaho State Police, um, two Idaho Chief Sheriffs and Prosecutors from Matthew Gamet ISP Forensic Service Laboratory System Director, and this is dated July twenty eighth, twenty twenty one. This was attached to one of Ann Taylor's uh, declarations, I believe, and this says that they were uh, super excited to announce that we have secured a Bureau of Justice Justice Assistance Grant to fund genetic genealogy testing and searching of unsolved Idaho cases. Mm -hmm. We are starting with unsolved homicides, essays, and missing people. So, this goes back to my original question. Were they unable to find a profile? Mm. Did they need the vacuum from Othram. Now, according to their statements, yes, ISP absolutely made an STR profile and ran it through CODIS. That's what Bill Thompson claims. That's what he claims is that they got a partial, they got a sample, and they ran it through CODIS and didn't get a match. That's what he says. Yep. Yep. Man. I'm curious. I'm curious what I I'm curious how they're going to going to attack this IgG. Uh, I'm curious if they're just going to use the IgG as a way to prove bias. Hmm. Do you think this could be the under the underlying tone of the case is using this IgG to prove that, hey, law enforcement like skipped here and skipped there? And skip there. Oh, yeah. And here. Uh, because that would be a great argument. I did not read all this. So I've been meeting to dig into this document. And guess what I just read? What? Idaho now has a formal contract with Authorm Laboratories, a prominent leader in forensic genealogy to conduct the genealogy testing and forensic genealogy searching. ISPFS, so ISP Forensic whatever, mm -hmm. uh, is ensuring that Authorm follows accepted laboratory processes and procedures and complies with the United States DOJ interim policy on, oh. foren on FGG DNA analysis and searching. Man. Well. So instead of, it says, instead of each law enforcement agency having to ne negotiate their own contract pricing and quality control with a private lab and genealogist, IS. PFS has done all or has done that at the state level through the Idaho Department of Purchasing. And they secured federal grant funding to offer these services to local county and state agencies at no cost to local LE agencies. Interesting. And there's Interesting. a team. 
So they formed the state genetic genealogy uh, investigation team consisting of laboratory personnel and Idaho state police investigator slash detective and a representative from the Rocky Mountain Information Network to identify cases eligible for testing under this grant. Hmm. And then once they determine it's eligible, they will bring it to the local law enforcement agency and prosecutor to bring them in on the team for that case. Whoa. Hmm. So the state team is a resource for local law enforcement. Yeah, we're That's gonna, what it we're says. gonna have to do another dive into DNA. I'm telling you, there is too much left on the table there. Wow, I didn't realize the state had a contract. I wish I would have seen this so long ago because this what this is attached to in Ann Taylor's one of her declarations is from like a while back. It's from a while back. Mm. So she knew. Yeah. She knows it's Authorum. This proves that. Oh yeah, there's no doubt about it being Authorum. I know, yeah. but but it was only ever mentioned as speculation from news sources. And then she attached this, which means it's proven. It was Authorum. They have a contract. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, which makes a lot of the other information more plausible. Oh, the ISP didn't. <gasps> yeah. The because ISP Authorum is a contract with them. They do it for them. Mm-hmm. Yep. So Shady maybe Authorum did find it and they're claiming ISP found it because that's a contract. That's a contractor for yeah, ISP. Very possible. So they just claim general umbrella term ISP found it. And don't mention Authorum. I mean, it's very possible. I think it's very possible. I, I, I think that would probably fall under a legal gray area. So, oh, yeah. my gosh. Yeah. Crazy. And we'll, we'll come back to that. All right, let's move on to number two here. So in the district court, second judicial district of the state of Idaho in and for the county of Lata, Lata, objection to defendant's motion to change venue and request for scheduling order. Of course. Right. Bill Thompson. State of Idaho versus Brian C. Koberger, defendant. Comes now the state of Idaho by and through the Lata County prosecuting attorney and objects to defendant's motion to change venue as it is premature. This is interesting. The state requests that this court set a trial date, a briefing schedule for the defendant's motion, a hearing date for the motion to be heard, and a deadline for supporting memoranda affidavits and witness disclosures sufficiently in advance of hearing so that the parties can adequately prepare defendants motion to change venue is premature and without sufficient basis basis defendant has not provided the court with adequate information to conclude that a Lata County jury could not fairly and impartially decide defendant's case. In Idaho, a motion for change of venue is within the discretion of the trial court. State versus win, 121 Idaho. And it gives a bunch of uh, case docket numbers. Idaho's appellate court looks to several Appellate, not yeah. apple. <laughs> a appellate court. <laughs> Courts look to several factors while determining whether a court, a trial court exercised its discretion in deciding a motion to change venue, including affidavits indicating prejudice or an absence of prejudice in the community and testimony of the jurors at Vor Dyer as to whether they had formed an opinion of the defendant's guilt or innocence based upon adverse pretrial publicity. Other factors for consideration are whether a defendant challenged for any for cause any individual jurors, the nature of pretrial publicity about the case and the duration of time between the publicity and the trial itself. The Idaho Supreme Court has also explained that publicity by itself does not require a change of venue. Because publicity is not a standalone reason for a court to change venue, this court should decline to decide 
defendant's motion until a trial date is set and the court has heard adequate facts to enable the court to make a determination. The state respectfully requests that this court set a trial date, set a hearing date for defendant's motion to change venue, issue deadlines for supporting memoranda and affidavits, and set a deadline for witness disclosures reasonably in advance of hearing. William W. Thompson. You know what I hear here? What? So, I, I think what he's saying is reasonable because I have learned more about change of venues, and typically they're not requested before a trial is scheduled. Okay. Usually it's closer to trial date. But what I hear here, he wants witnesses he wants Correct. affidavits he Correct. wants information he wants to know their Correct. direction he wants to know if they have wit alibi witnesses he wants to know things correct absolutely that's exactly what he wants to know he's trying to find out information to see if he is going to concede to uh the 2025 um court date or the 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 trial date I think he's using this hearing to find out as much as he can. I've said that from the very beginning. From the very beginning, the prosecution seems like they are actively seeking to find the angle of the defendant, which is strange to me, you guys. It's very strange to me when the prosecution is that interested in what the defense or defendant is alleging or going to be alleging or saying or defending themselves with. Because you either have the evidence to prove that he's guilty or you don't. So what, like why that important importance is there? I, the defense doesn't have to disclose anything. Nothing, it's the thing. They are nothing. allowed to keep all of that a secret. Absolutely. They are. Absolutely. They are. <laughs> yep. They sure are. Absolutely. So, so why that's going on? I, I don't know. Um, but I will say what's interesting is that. The trial date can be changed if the location changes. Yeah. And they, they want them to set the trial date before change of venue when this venue is causing the trial date to be placed in between these two dates. But if you change the venue, then those trial dates don't matter. Yeah, Ann Taylor also said she doesn't even think it could be completed in summer. Like, it would be longer yeah. than what summer even is. A absolutely. Absolutely. Which is kind of insane. A 15-week trial? That's pretty nuts. Well, if look, you have the Y&W Melly case that uh, did not have good evidence, and I think cases that don't have good evidence tend to go longer. I really do. So I'm wondering, do they have good evidence, you know? I don't know. Weird. It is very strange. At least he didn't say the people of Wata deserve I agree. this trial to be here. I agree. <laughs> like he did in court. That's absurd. The whole thing was absurd. And he did not, that is, the defense did not say it was just because of media. No. They mentioned many other things. They, they did. They did. And I, I don't even think they mentioned the important things. Um, based off what Ann, how Ann Taylor has been managing um, the case so far, uh, I feel like she always keeps something in her back pocket because whenever there's a response, it's like she's submitting a request knowing there's going to be a response and knowing that she's actually going to give the good information in the response to that response. You know what I mean? It's really strange. Uh, it's not, I mean, it's smart. I, it's just not always common to see is what I meant to say. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting. I, I could see the point that you're making by wanting to set all that first. However, the big deal is, is the trial date and that trial date, uh, hinders on the vendor location or yeah. venue location. I'm sorry, <laughs> vendor venue location. Yep. So true. Number three states responses to defendants motion to allow certain experts and investigators protected access to view IgG material and motion. 
requesting clarification of sealed order for disclosure of IgG information and protection order. Comes now the state of Idaho by and through the Lata County prosecuting attorney and respectfully submits the following responses to the defendant's motion to allow certain experts and investigators protected access to view IgG materials filed on February 1st, 2024. The defendant's motion requesting clarification of the sealed order for disclosure of IgG information and protection order filed on February 8th, 2024, regarding the expansion of the protected protection order to include Dr. Leah Larkin, Bicca Barlow, and Stephen Mercer, the state does not object. Nice. Regarding the expansion of the protection order to include unnamed criminal investigators, unfettered access to the IgG materials, the state objects. At a minimum, individuals who will have access to any of the IgG materials should be named. Further, defense has failed to make an adequate showing as to why such individuals need the information for the preparation of the defense. They don't... They shouldn't need to say why they need that. Um, defendant states why that the, those individuals. Yeah, defendant states that the information is requested to investigate how and when Mr. Koberger was identified as a suspect. This information can be obtained from the TUI letter from the FBI to the state dated November 28, 2023. The state objects to the balance of the IgG materials being provided to the criminal investigators for the reasons articulated by the court in its protective order. Regarding the defense's motion requesting clarification of the sealed order for disclosure of the IgG information and protection order, the defense experts or investigators should not be allowed to use the protected materials to identify individuals or witness to contact without prior authoriz authorization from the court and after showing why such contact is necessary for the preparation of the defense. This would not prohibit the defense from contacting potential witnesses learned through sources outside of the protected information. The state respectfully submits the appropriate course of action. The appropriate course of action would be for the court to amend sealed order for disclosure of IgG information and protection order to allow Dr. Leah Larkin, Bicca Barlow, and Stephen Mercer access to the IgG materials disclosed to the defense. The criminal investigators seek access to the information should be named in the order, and those investigators should only be allowed access to the November 28, 2023 letter provided to the defense. The state also requests the following language for an amended protected order. This court orders that only defense counsel Ann Taylor, Jay Logston, and Eliza Masseth, defendant Brian Koberger, and Dr. Leah Larkin, Bicca Barler, Barlow, and Stephen Mercer may view the materials provided. Insert the names of the criminal investigators may view the November 28, 2023 letter contained within the materials. Any further dissemination of the materials or the information contained within the materials must first be approved by the court after an adequate showing by the defense as to why such information is necessary, necessary and material to the preparation of the defense. Additionally, no individual learned solely through the review of the material shall be contacted by the defense or any agent of the defense without prior authorization from the court after an adequate showing as to why such contact is necessary and material to the preparation of the defense. Respectfully submitted the 9th day of February. Interesting. I feel like that's fair. I feel like that document's fair. I do feel like it was fair too. Yep. Uh, the TUI request, I pulled that up, yeah. What is a TUI request? Uh, named after the Supreme Court case, United States, TUI versus Reagan, 340 U.S., a TUI request seeks an official information for litigation purposes, including witnesses and documents, when the government is not party to the litigation. Hmm. When the government is not a party to the litigation. What does that mean? Uh, 
So Code of Federal Regulations, sometimes referred to as the Department's TUI Regulations, named after United States um, X Rel TUI verse Reagan, uh, mm-hmm. 1951. Provide that no present or former employee of the Department of Justi- Justice may testify or produce departmental records in response to subpoenas or demands of courts or other authorities issued in any state or federal proceeding without obtaining prior approval by an appropriate department official. Vargas. Um, so, inf- what? What do you mean? So, no present or former employee of the Department of Justice may testify or produce records, okay, departmental records in response to any demands from a court other than authorities issued or other authorities issued in any, okay, without, they just can't get it. They can't provide it without obtaining prior approval by an appropriate department official. Any material contained in the files of the department, any information relating to material contained in the files of the department, any information acquired by an employee of the department as part of the performance of that employee's official duties or because of the employee's official status. Yep. 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 I think that could fall in line and give uh, an understanding of a couple different things, right? Oh, so there was amendments made in the 1980s that decentralized the authorization power and established different procedures to be followed in cases in which the United States is and those cases in which the United States is not a party. Additionally, alternate procedural steps are sometimes involved where the originating component is or is not litigating division of the department. A denial policy generally applicable to both situations exists. Okay. it makes me question right off the top that we heard that they didn't want to produce any background work, right? It's of a how way they got to this. So we've asked why did the FBI step up and, and grab all the IgG information based off of what we've heard happened? Okay. Is this why? Is this why? As soon as th- they took ownership. Of this information, it falls under this. As soon as the FBI did. Correct. Meaning they didn't have to, because of this, it th- that's exactly Correct. what this is. It protects the government from having to turn over things they don't want to turn exactly. over. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so it literally says that. It literally says that. It, it says that word for word. I know. I know. That's what I just said. What is a TUI request? So the original originating component is the office or agency or division or bureau that was responsible for the collection, assembly, or other preparation of the materials demanded. Correct. Which is why the FBI had to come take lead in the IgG. I'm telling you, dude, there is something going on with Texas. With Othram is what I'm saying. So they Othram started all of this, but they didn't finish it. Why? Why? They simply are intended to provide a procedure whereby the department will have the opportunity to protect certain types of information from unwarranted and unconsidered disclosure. Mm. Specific questions should be referred to the appropriate litigating division of the apartment. Yeah. Or, or department. And the fact that they have a TUI request proves just that. They wanted to protect it. Correct. Yeah. So did the FBI even do any of the work? No, obviously. They just took it over Correct. so that nobody would have to show their work. Correct. That's so shady. It feels like Bill Thompson's got some FBI agents in his back pocket. It could be. I don't know. Because what about Vargas? I, I've i said that too. And But this makes me think, has has Vargas done work for the FBI before? And that's Probably. the real reason. Probably. That the FBI came and was like, hey, you, you're not allowed to speak. That's what we theorized the other night. Was oh, the TUI. Correct. She's not allowed correct. to. When she said, I know that they correct. go against. They violate these rules 
and she's talking on what they're doing that's wrong they're like you're not allowed to disclose that you're under these policies you're an agent for Correct. the FBI. Yeah. You are not allowed or whatever, a contractor, whatever. Yep. You're under this rule. So you're not allowed to talk on this. Look, a lot of people wondered if Vargas and I, I mean, I brought up the question too, you know, so I can be guilty for <laughs> making people wonder, but they've wondered if Vargas going on truth and transparency, like discredited her. And I did bring up that theory because I think it's a good question. I think it's a valid question, right? Because you look biased. Um, just by making any comments or, or anything like that and siding with content creators that very avidly believe he's innocent, you know, or I but, mean, or are questioning hardcore, like are questioning yeah. the police and the, yeah. the state. Right, 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 right. Um, but I think this is very likely why the FBI went to her house okay yep. and it could be very scary being like hey look dude you need to understand the implications of your actions here you know you went to court and you worked for for us you know you were subcontracted for us and you did work on this case this case and this case so Vargas you know, is literally known as one of the best in her particular field. Yeah, I'm I'm sure she is. I'm I'm so that makes I'm not sense. Doubting. Yeah. That makes sense. She would have worked for the FBI, is all I'm saying. I'm I'm telling you, she she is uh incredible, and I think that's why she was paneled up with three other really incredible leading uh yep. DNA experts, you know. Um, and I think it's very likely the FBI was like, yo, we own you, <laughs> you can't say anything, you know. And I wonder if she went on truth and transparency as a screw you. I wonder. Oh, was like, okay, I'll work around it. We'll see. That would be very, very you know what I mean? interesting. It would be, but it would also be smart. Yeah. So, but, uh, interesting stuff here you guys hopefully i'm going to be able to break these up into three and put out you know shorter versions of them also um what do you think about that last one we we dug kind of into the tui request i think what they're asking for is really fair though i think that uh you know with how many names could potentially be involved in this igg information i don't think it's wrong that they expect to have every investigator named you know what i mean be, and, and I could see this being there to control a leak. Yeah. So I understand it. I support it. I get it. Uh, but I I do think with uh I do think with uh how widely known and respected Ann Taylor's investigative team is, though, they should have access to this. Agreed. I really think so. They're professionals, you know, and they're used nationally. So I agree with you, but let me know what you guys think. And that is it for this story. Let me know your comments.